Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta, Epsilon, Zeta, Eta, Theta, Iota, Capital, Lambda, Mu, Nu, Zyro, Sigma, Tau, Upsilon, Phi, Chi, Psi, Omega. Hey everyone, this is David Starr from Watcher Pass, and today I'm going to review Rush, which is coming to theaters and digital on August 27th, 2021. Um, it's, it's a movie about a fraternity and hazing and kind of a mother's quest for answers, and it's a very different movie than I expected. Now, I'm going to preface this all by saying I was in a fraternity when I was in college. Uh, I had a good experience. I, you know, there are, there are good fraternity experiences. My fraternity brothers are lifelong friends. I still talk to them daily, but that being said, uh, there are uh, there is hazing in fraternities, or so I'm told. There is a lot of you know there there are deaths that occur. There's a, there's a lot of shady stuff that can happen in fraternities, and rushed goes into that. So being someone who was in a fraternity, I will say this movie is very very good, and it's it's something that I I didn't really know what to expect going in, uh, and I was very pleasantly surprised. I thought this would be a very different kind of movie than it ended up being. So. Uh, first, I'm going to go, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the film. I'm going to go into three things I liked, a couple things I didn't really love, and then go into the ending. So I would recommend that you don't watch this video if you haven't seen the film and go watch the movie because I really liked going in not knowing what to expect. There were some very surprising scenes that I wasn't expecting. Uh, and if, you know, I'd known about the film, they might not have had the same dramatic impact. So Against my self-interest, I'm going to recommend that you turn this off, go watch the movie, and then come back and watch the video after. But if you really want to know about the film, maybe you want to know uh, some more about the ending, then, you know, let, let's keep going. So in Rushed, you have J.J. Uh, Warren playing Jimmy O'Brien. And God, I love seeing J.J. Warren again. He is such a fantastic actor. And he plays Jimmy O'Brien, who is rushing a fraternity, uh, Pi Sigma Chi which I, I think it is it was at New York State University is where this, you know, occur or this film takes place. Uh, and so he is rushing this fraternity and he is kind of going through the hazing rituals. And it's, I think it's finally either like a pledge night or like, you know, like pledge week. It seems like it's the start of, of, a, of a grueling ordeal, but kind of the, the end is in sight for him. And throughout this all, he's, you know, communicating with his family. Uh, they're, they're a very close knit Catholic family, the O'Briens. Uh, and he's telling, you know, his mom is very concerned about making sure that he gets into the fraternity. His dad was also a member of fraternity. So, it, you know, fraternity is important to this family. Um, and so they are communicating during this, this hazing events in the build up to this kind of big hazing night. And then again, if you don't want to know, don't, don't watch this, but uh, you know, at the hazing night, Jimmy, uh, Jimmy O'Brien, played by J.J. Warren, uh, ends up dying because he was given, uh, he was forced to drink a lot of alcohol. He was given um, a beer that was laced with some drugs. I forget what, I think it was fentanyl, but I forget exactly what it was, but I think it was fentanyl. Um, and so he kind of overdoses, goes into essentially a coma, and then he, you know, his parents have to be there when they pull the plug on him. And so it, it's, this really amazing dramatic shift from this kind of film that uh, kind of starts off loving and humorous. You've got the family supporting him. You've got, you, you have some difficult scenes to watch from the hazing, but overall you get a, a good kind of feel for the overall experience. And then it turns very dramatic. So after Jimmy dies, his mother goes on this quest to learn more about what happened and, you know, talk to other families that have had uh, young men die at a fraternity and kind of gather their stories in order to try to lobby Congress or her senator to, to get some laws in place. And, you know, that's about as much of the movie as uh, I'll tell you right now. Um, and let's go into the things I really liked. So the first thing is uh, Siobhan, uh, Fall Siobhan Fallon Hogan, who plays the main, kind of the main force in this film, Barbara O'Brien, uh, who's Jimmy's mom. Uh, she is amazing in this film. Like this, this film is kind of a showcase for her, and she's a tour de force in this movie. She goes from, you know, a supportive, loving, caring mother to kind of a mother on a mission when she's trying to get some answers about her son and try to gather some more stories uh, from other fraternity uh, events. And then later on, she it, there's another character shift, but throughout this whole thing, she kind of carries this film to because she is the kind of the constant. At the start, you get a lot of interactions between the various family characters you see them going to school and they're calling jimmy and asking him what's going on and they're talking to his roommate and it's, it's kind of a, a you know a mixed a mixed group of 
family members and characters that you meet. But then once, uh, you know, once Barbara goes on her mission, her information gathering trip, it really becomes all about her. And she does a great job of carrying this through, you know, some, some dramatic aspects. There's some, there's some humor when she, you know, is, is kind of talking about the people that she's seen. There's some, you know, unintentional humor in, in what happens. And then there's some very, very dramatic scenes. Again, the, the film is just propelled by her performance. Uh, the second thing I really loved is the, the the drama in this film. You know, I I was expecting this to be kind of a more sinister film. I don't know. I was just looking at the pictures uh, that were being posted by the, the Rush Instagram account. And it looked like, you know, maybe more of a horror film. Uh, but it is a lot more drama than it is horror. And the dramatic scenes are very, very good. You know, I, I loved seeing, well, I didn't love, but I thought that the grief scenes were done very, very well. I really liked seeing how different members of the family coped with Jimmy's loss differently. And they, they all took it differently. They tried to help each other. Um, but e you can tell that each person was affected by it, uh, but they all did it very differently, which I appreciate. I liked that there wasn't some sort of like uniform language. And, you know, if, 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 you, if, you, if you hear anything about grief, it's that everyone grieves in a different way. And I really liked seeing how, you know, some of the members, they kind of wanted to just move on and not even talk about it. Some of the members were kind of in a rut and then, you know, then eventually uh, Barbara's character kind of goes on this mission, this crusade to try to you know, get some change because of her son's death. Um, and the last thing I really liked uh, is the, the hazing scenes and, and the stories that you hear because, you know, I, I think everyone kind of hears about fraternity hazing and you, you hear the stories about what can happen and what happens, uh, but seeing it re represented on screen in, in what I imagine is a pretty accurate representation of some fraternities hazing rituals uh, was, it was, it was tough to watch and it was also very well done. Like I, I thought that they did a good job with some of the extreme things that can potentially happen, some of the peer pressures that can happen, some of the kind of hierarchy structures in a fraternity. So I thought that, you know, those were all valuable to be represented on screen. I also liked the, you know, kind of difference in generations. You know, you had some older individuals who looked at their fraternity experience differently than, you know, maybe some of the younger individuals who were going through it. You had uh, some of the parents who were kind of very excited about their kids versus, you know, maybe some of the kids were less excited because of what was going on. And I liked all of that being represented, this, this was all kind of at the start, but I really liked all of that, all of that being shown on screen because I thought it was a very good way to frame the film and also a good representation of kind of what can happen. So things I didn't love, and I will, I will be frank, like I liked this film a lot. I thought this film was very well done. So these, these are all minor. Uh, but the, the first thing I didn't really love is the twist. And the twist, again, spoilers, um, after, I'll get into this in the ending, but kind of towards the end, it turns into a still a drama, but maybe a little bit more of a sinister drama, uh, more sinister horror, maybe maybe thriller, I guess would be kind of the better word. Uh, and this shift I wasn't expecting because uh, Barbara goes from like an Aaron Brockovich kind of character trying to get answers to something a lot darker and, and you know, something that there's a, you know, I didn't expect from her character given her crusade and what was happening. And, and the ending discussion will go into why but I just thought that this was a pretty dramatic shift and it did make for an interesting film and it did make for kind of a, a powerful ending but I, I don't know I was expecting it maybe to go a little bit on a, a happier side and it, it it veered very very quickly um but that being said I thought it was like I said I thought it was, it was well done I thought it provided a very different type of uh experience and again like this this was driven by uh Siobhan Fallon Hogan's amazing acting so i was i was enjoying or at least mesmerized in the experience i just thought that the twist felt a little abrupt and and like a very big change of character for her the other thing i didn't love is that i kind of wanted a little bit more of some of the good of fraternities but again you know that's not the focus of this film this film is not you know meant to kind of present both sides but there are a lot of very positive things that can happen in fraternities. Like I was kind of molded by my fraternity experience. Uh, you know, like I said, I still talk to a lot of my fraternity brothers. I talk to them daily. Uh, so there are a lot of very good fraternity experiences. And, and some of that kind of comes up a little bit. But more often than not in the film, those good aspects are kind of overshadowed by the, the very terrible incident that occurred in the film. But they're not, they, they don't feel like they, they're 
balanced as well. And again, I get, I get that that's not the point of this film. So, you know, it would be kind of odd if there was a lot of stories about good experiences, but, you know, maybe experiences of potentially the fraternity brothers rallying behind them or something like that. But again, it's not, it's, it's a minor criticism. The film is very, very well done as is. And so now I'm going to go to the ending, uh, which, you know, will it goes into kind of this dramatic twist that I talked about. So uh, what happens is Barbara is on this mission to gather stories from fraternities, uh, from, you know, parents of people that have lost. Uh, so Barbara is on this mission to gather stories from parents who have lost children in fraternity incidents. And so she, she's going kind of cross country, trying to talk to these people and get their stories so she can then give it to her senator, who happens to be an old fraternity brother of her husband. Uh, and so she's, she kind of goes on this quest to then end, try to end up at the senator's house to give him all these stories and try to get some sort of change, some legislation uh, to either you know, provide more oversight for fraternities or limit fraternity activities, something along those lines. And what happens is she's, she's set to meet the senator, but she's so excited because of all the information that she's getting that she arrives a day early. And what happens when she's there is there's a fundraiser at the senator's house. It seems to be a fundraiser in memory of a, a young man that had died as a result of a fraternity incident. Uh, but it was raising money to kind of lobby to preserve the fraternity system, to kind of lobby against any sort of change. So she arrives a day early, is so excited to talk to the senator, and walks into this event that, as you can imagine, does not sit well with her. So she gives a very strong speech um, before she leaves. And then she essentially just leaves. She kind of gives up. She basically feels like the system is stacked against her because she was supposed to meet with this senator who said that he was going to do things to help her. Uh, and it turns out the day before he's fundraising for the exact opposite uh, of what she was hoping for. So she calls her husband, who is talking to her son's roommate slash fraternity pledge brother. Um, and she finds out that you know, the extent of what happened during the hazing and uh, he sends her husband tells him tells her son's roommate to send her the pictures of what happened. And so she sees some of the pictures of some of the more extreme hazing incidents that occurred. And, you know, she becomes very quiet, gets very angry and does a U-turn. And then the movie becomes a little more sinister. It shows her going to a liquor store to purchase some alcohol. She purchases a gun and she finds a remote location. I think it's a cabin or at least a room uh, somewhere that's fairly remote. Uh, and then she goes to her you know, son's frat house and kidnaps the president who we find out earlier was kind of responsible for all of this. I don't think, I think she suspected that he was. I don't know if she necessarily knew that he was, um, but she kidnaps him and takes him to this location. Um, and she starts questioning him. She tapes him to a chair and essentially starts hazing him in the way that he hazed her son. She forces him to drink. She forces him to drink pee. Uh, so, so some very well done vengeance. And, and you know, again, Siobhan does a fantastic job in this. And also, so does um, so does Jake Weary, who plays Steve Croson. Like he, his character is tough because he is kind of this machismo, you know, fraternity guy who kind of is not supposed to be likable, uh, but he does a really good job in this and kind of in this dramatic scene of, of showing, you know, kind of his fear in what is about to happen. Uh, and I also really love that throughout this whole torture, hazing, you know, backwards hazing scene, uh, Barbara's character is still perfectly intact um, because, you know, when she, when she pulls out the gun and uh, and Steve sees this, uh, he says, like, holy shit. And she's like, don't say holy shit. It's a bad habit. Like, she, she is still in this, like, mom mode while she is essentially torturing uh, her son's killer. And I, I loved that about it because it shows that she is still kind of this character, even though she's going to these extremes, it's, she's still in her character. Um, you know, she, when, when she says that, she goes like, don't say holy shit, don't swear, it's a horrible habit. You know, I, was, I told Jimmy, you know, not to develop these bad habits and, you know, you, sh you shouldn't either, which I thought was just a really, really great touch in this overall dramatic scene. So after she kind of goes through a few of the hazing type incidents, she makes him drink alcohol, she makes him drink pee, uh, she points the gun at him and tells him to call his, she, she tells, she asks him who killed her son and he kind of says he doesn't know. 
Uh, she then points the gun and tells her to call his mom and tell her who killed his, her, her son. And so uh, Jimmy, you know, so Steve calls his mom, wakes her up, and you know, basically under duress says, like, you know, I killed Jimmy. And then you hear a gunshot, and then the phone cuts out. And it's, it's a very, very well done scene. Because um, you don't know what happens. Like, that, that's, just, that's just it. The phone cuts out. And next thing you see is you see Barbara going into, the, into her car and calling the police to say that they have to check on a student. And she, I think she gives the address. And then, then it cuts to her kind of back at home. So you're still kind of confused. There's not a lot that you are sure about right now. Um, but she's back at home. Everyone's happy. She goes to the church. Uh, she kind of prays in front of the Virgin Mary and kind of says, I'm sorry. And then she calls the sheriff. And we see the family then, without Barbara, pulling up back into the house driveway. And her husband, uh, Jim, who's played by Robert Patrick, who does a really good job. And I will say also, uh, it was really nice to see kind of a star in an indie film who actually kind of has a substantial role. Like he, it, it's not, like there's some indie films I've watched where you've got like a, a major star and they have a very small role just for either timing purposes or budget, you know, you know, it, it's tough to get their time for smaller projects. Um, but uh, Robert Patrick played a meaty role in this film and he definitely was involved in a lot of the different scenes. So you have them pull up and you see, you know, the family minus Barbara kind of in the, in this van and they, you know, and the husband, Jim says, kids, I'm gonna need you all to step up uh, here. So you're kind of, you kind of get the impression that uh, Barbara's probably not there. And then you see Barbara in a jumpsuit. And it cuts to, you, you kind of hear some of the audio before it actually shows her in court. It cuts to her in court. Um, and, you know, you, you hear an attorney asking her, well, how could you do something so barbaric? Uh, and she says, because he killed my son. And then the next question is, well, why would you not make them suffer through the night thinking that their son had died? Uh, and it kind of pans over and you see, you know, uh, Steve's mother and then you see Steve. And, and Barbara then says, because I thought of his mother. No mother should think their son is dead for more than two minutes. And then her attorney asks why. And, because, and she says, because it's unbearable. And then the movie ends. So again, this, this film is so well done. And I really loved the ending. I, I, I didn't love the twist to becoming more sinister, but I did think it was very, very well done. Especially the fact that you don't really know what happens. You don't know. And you get some, some hints because she still stays in character, even though she's very upset she still stays in her like mother character. And from what we've gathered from our experience with Barbara, she is caring and loving and, and really wants to get justice, but it doesn't seem like she's a killer. So that's why this whole twist was, was such a, a big kind of unexpected change. But you find on the end that she didn't actually kill him. She just, you know, not just, she kidnapped him, you know, hazed him tortured him however you want to call it i guess you probably call it torture because you forced him to drink alcohol in peace that's probably torture um and then you know scared him greatly scared his family greatly but didn't actually kill him and then that's it you don't really find out what else happened i kind of expected there to be some sort of scene during the credits like some sort of statement about you know hazing deaths or something like that but the, the, it was didn't it didn't have that it then kind of went straight to credits but that being said Rushed is very good. You know, as someone who was in a fraternity, I think Rushed is very good. I think that it is good to show what can happen during hazing. There's so many fraternities. Uh, there's so many young men who are kind of put in these situations. And some of them do it right. Some of them probably don't. And it's always good to show what can happen, like what the consequences are. Because then hopefully there will be changes, like processes that put in place. I know that, you know, in my fraternity, whenever there was some sort of national incident we would kind of look at what we were doing to see if there was something that we could change to make sure that that didn't happen at our house. And so I think that things like this are good to kind of get out there. And on top of that, it is a very good movie. And uh, Siobhan Fallon Hogan does a fantastic job. So that's Rushed. It's coming to theaters and digital on August 27th, 2021. So it might be playing near you, but if not, you can also rent it digitally. It's coming from Vertical Entertainment. And, uh, you know, I, I definitely think you should check it out. I think it's a really good movie. And I think it's also very surprising. I didn't know what to expect going into it. And I was pleasantly surprised. So thanks so much for watching. If you liked this review, please like and subscribe to this channel. It helps me a lot. Make sure all my new content goes straight to you. Thank you.